watching Global Energy Show's 5x5 series. I'm Rachel Gregory, and today I'm joined by Per Roed, Chief Technical Officer with Pavaris Energy. Per, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Rachel. Thanks for having me. Tell us about Provaris Energy. Who are you and what do you do? Provaris Energy is an Australian listed company. Our background was in compressed natural gas. From 2019 onwards, we started focusing on hydrogen, green hydrogen, and how we could use compression as a means to transport hydrogen effectively on a regional basis. We set up our European office last year. That's where I'm then based out of Oslo in Norway. Chief Technical Officer focused on, on the, the shipping aspect and the technology behind our company, but also on the, on the European market and the opportunities here now. At the end of last year, the world's first design was approved for the H2 Neo Compressed Hydrogen Carrier. Can you tell us more about this? We started the development of our H2 Neo and our H2 Max, our larger size ships back in 2019. That led to obtaining an approval in Prince from from the American Bureau of Shipping back in 2021. We then focused all of 2022 on on doing an extensive feed level design of the H2 Neo. We, we see that as the lead ship out of our series of ships that we can do. So that could be the first of the market. It's a small one, and so it meet the sort of current demand as we see it in the market to get the hydrogen projects up and running. Then a lot of effort, of course, on the cargo containment system and how we can effectively integrate that into kind of conventional ship hull forms. You know, developing the whole ship design aspect. So anything from pollution through to fire and gas detection, fire suppression systems, machine rearrangements and everything like that. So we have a plus minus five to 10% feed level package that is now ready to go out to market for, for pricing and scheduling. We have one of the first leading means to transport hydrogen in a hydrogen form and ready to bring that to the market 2026 onwards. So Per, can you tell us more about how Provaris is working with Norwegian Hydrogen AS on the development of green hydrogen projects? When it came to setting up our European outfit, the Norway was finally sort of strategic agenda. The Norwegian government has a lot of focus on hydrogen as a, as a future fuel and, and a future energy. Compression is widely recognized in Norway. To now have made the, the partnership with the Norwegian Hydrogen AES is kind of like a testament to you know what we can bring to the market here to get projects up and running. Norway has Hydropower as a, as a base power, which is beneficial. We can connect to the grid. Lots of development on on and offshore wind. So there's a lot of potential for essentially green hydrogen developments. And it's a very good location in relation to the European market. It's right in our sweet spot when it comes to transporting the hydrogen to the off-takers. Why is hydrogen so important right now and why should people be paying attention? Um, obviously, we got to do something when it comes to the environment and, and climate change issues that we're facing. Hydrogen gives a solution to the hard to abate emissions in industry. I think that there's lots of issues with a number of other factors and transportation vectors to it. And if we can get hydrogen delivered effectively, then that's the way to go. For opinion, which country has the best infrastructure to produce hydrogen at the scale needed? It's a matter of trying to identify, you know, what is your demand and, and where's the most efficient source of that hydrogen. I think a lot of organization and media to some extent is, is trying to mirror the global hydrogen flows or future hydrogen flows in accordance with how L&D has been done, right? So it goes from major sources and a, and a global trade. I think hydrogen is different in a sense that you need to look at the whole value chain. You need to sort of look at the full integration of upstream, midstream and, and downstream. In that aspect, it's more important to kind of look at what you need where and where's the most efficient renewable energy resource for them. You know, Norway being a small country, it has its benefits to a lot of the European flows, etc. So we, we're trying to sort of say, let's not just say that we need to have three, four or five major export hubs, but let's try and identify where the demand is. And from that aspect, what's the most beneficial export site? to make that happen. Well, thank you so much. It was great chatting with you and hearing about Provaris Energy um, and the work you are doing. So thanks for taking the time. Thanks, Rachel.